Hey there. So you're thinking of getting a pet, huh? Well, I'm glad that you clicked on me first. I'll be honest, just the fact that you did already makes me think that you're going to be a great pet parent. Most people will not do any research before getting one. And I see it lead to heartache. I see it lead to a lot of unfortunate consequences that could have easily been avoided. Now, real quick disclaimer, I am not a vet. I am not a certified anything. I am just a guy that's worked at a pet store for 10 years and I'm, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I just see people coming in and getting what I've been calling pandemic pets. They're getting them because they're at home, they're bored, or their kids at home and bored. And that's just not a good reason to get a pet. You want to get a pet because you want a companion. You don't want to get a pet because you have nothing to do at the moment. This is a life that we're talking about. And again, since you clicked on me, I think that you know that it's going to be more than just going to a store, picking out a pet in a cage, bringing them home, and then you just make sure that the kid feeds it daily. It's it's so much more than that. So, oh, w at least where I uh, am at, you need to be 18 in order to get any animal from a pet store. So if you're 18 plus and watching this, awesome. If you are a parent and you want to show your kid this video, I'd watch it all the way through because I'm not going to pull any punches. I will watch my language, but I'm going to be pretty straightforward and brutal about the beginning and end of uh, pets' lives. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so let's just jump into it. So before you even head to the pet store, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, first one would be adoption, actually. Let's go, let's start with adoption because more likely than not, the animal that you're looking to get, somebody else already has. They did not know what they were getting themselves into, or there's just been some unforeseen circumstances. And now, not only does this animal need a new home, but you can probably get it for a pretty sweet deal, habitat included. So you're saving money, you're saving a life. Think about doing adoption before even going into the pet store and getting a fresh one off the shelf, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, um, what I plan to do with this channel is this is just going to be an introduction to pets in general, and then I'm planning on each week putting out a uh, more specific one. So I will do one specifically for hamsters. I will do one specifically for um, guinea pigs, etc., etc. I'll try and start with the more common ones and go from there uh, to the more exotic. But this is just, a, an, an in general, things you should think about before even going into the store. Um, and yeah, so like I said, one big one is that you're not going to be able to send the kid in um, if you're a parent, you're going to need to go in with them. And I think that's a very good rule, especially because nine times out of ten, the parents are the ones that end up taking care of the animal. So your kid might, you know, have be promising, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to do it. I kept my room clean for a month. I'm responsible. But there's nothing like actually owning one. And you might want to keep in mind... Uh, the overall life of the pet. So what I mean by that is some of the um, starter animals, for instance, hamsters, they only live a few years. So be go, go into that knowing that you might have to have the death talk a little bit sooner than you originally thought because that uh, hamster's not going to live too long. On the other end of things, a leopard gecko makes a wonderful starter animal. They're very easy to take care of once you have the habitat set up, but they live to be 22 years old. So keep in mind that this little kid that you're getting them for is going to grow up, go to college, maybe won't be able to take the lizard with them when they go to their dorm room or whatever. This might end up being your lizard two decades from now. So keep that in mind. It's, it's crazy how, it, especially, all right, especially with fish. Fish is going to be its own category, but um, you are not going to go into the pet store and get the tank and the fish on the same day, okay? Unless it's a betta fish, we a uh, pet store legally cannot allow you to get the tank and the fish on the same day, and if we suspect that that goldfish is going into a bowl, we're going to say no. At least any self-respecting per person can. I know that goldfish in a bowl has been a 
my mom and my mom's mom and my mom's mom's mom did. Um, something you got to realize is that the reason why um, that used to be a thing is, well, people, uh, we do breed goldfish for food, uh, feeder fish for, uh, you know, other animals that can only eat, uh, you know, live fish. So, you know, a lot of them are uh, just a few cents. Um, but a goldfish in a bowl is basically being in a garage with a, a gasoline car running. It's it's just continuously making, you know, the environment funkier and funkier. F goldfish are notorious poopers, basically. They uh, poop twice as much as any other uh, fish. And um, they can grow to the size of a football. They can live uh, 20 years on average. The oldest living goldfish was 44 years old. And so um, fish, goldfish can even recognize faces. So there's a lot more going on uh, to a fish. Um, and again, I'll do a whole other fish segment. But I mean, I just ask any uh, pet store worker that when Finding Nemo came out, it, it, was, it has been the bane of our existence because now... Kids will see a clownfish, run up, go, Nemo, Daddy, can we have him? And if owning a freshwater aquarium is a hobby, then owning a saltwater aquarium is basically a lifestyle change. So that is not something for amateurs. Uh, clownfish is a saltwater fish. Uh, the odds are going to be pretty good that the time and effort and capacity that you would need to have a saltwater tank is just not doable. I mean... You, you ask anybody that you need a, you need a lot of a disposable income, even if you're getting um, just a mouse in a tiny little uh, habitat. Um, first of all, the initial purchase is always going to be more than you expect. I mean, even if it's a twenty dollar animal, you might need to have about two hundred dollars worth of stuff for that animal that you don't have yet. Um, oh, and a common question that we get asked at a lot of pet stores is, "It's my kid's birthday next week." Can I buy them now and have them stay at the store until it's their birthday? No. No. It's a life. We can't. We cannot do that. Um, once once you purchase it, it's your life now. And um, oh, by just quick suggestion for that. So one thing I I, I uh, would recommend is if, let's say you do want to surprise them on their birthday. Well, again, we always encourage that you would buy a habitat first anyway. So if you get all that stuff. Uh, most, you know, stores will have an over a 30 day, you know, return policy for, for that stuff. So you can get, uh, get the habitat stuff. You can get it set up. That can be what they open on their birthday. And then the second half of the gift is that they can go to the store or, uh, go to the store and then be able to pick up the animal. There's nothing better than a, uh, that a, than a gift that also has anticipation involved in it. So for instance, um, I, I think the most excited I ever was when I was a kid, was when we went to the store for me to pick out a video game and then the ride home before getting said video game like there was no greater feeling than I'm, I'm reading the instruction manual I'm, re I'm, I'm reading you know like I, I remember that being one of the most thrilling car rides of, of my life is any time that I got to go purchase the um, pur purchase the game uh, I digress but it's like you know, just something to consider is, you know, maybe the initial excitement can be opening the habitat and then the second excitement can be getting them at the store. But um, I digress with the whole video game reference. And all I'm doing is dating myself because, you know, although, no, I guess you could still probably have that excitement. Um, but yeah, so the reason why uh, I bring up the game and the difference between that and an animal is that a lot of these animals... Uh, you bring home, and the kid's immediately going to want to start playing with them. And most of the time, you can't do that. So, for instance, with a hamster, if you get the hamster, you bring it home, and uh, get him in their habitat. Leave that guy alone for a at least a day or two. Let him get used to the sights, the smells, the sounds, um, just the shock of being transported. Because um, just stress alone can cause uh, health issues. So you don't want to have them so stressed out that they get... Um, something called wet tail. I'll get into that more when I do the hamsters, but, um, you know, just keep in mind that um, too much stress, uh, not enough supplemental diet um, can actually cause a uh, animal to get sick or worse, uh, die just because um, you wanted to start playing with it right away as though it were a video game if it's not. So, um, some other things to consider. Uh, like I said, 
the lifespan of a uh, animal, but also if you're getting one during quarantine and you have all this time in the world right now, um, that might not bode well for the animal later on. Um, saying this with dogs mostly in mind, but I'm sure it can apply to a lot of animals. So you're stuck at home. You decided to get yourself a puppy just for sanity's sake. But if you're home 24-7 and then you go back to work, that dog is guaranteed to have separation anxiety. They're going to think that you're leaving them to go hunt and they're part of the pack and they're not allowed to come, so they worry that they might get kicked out of the pack. Um, just consider what is going to be happening later on. So um, I don't just mean, you know, a few months down the road, but a few years down the road. Um, I've it's tragic, but I see so many people that have a dog up for adoption, and the reason they gave is because they're moving to a new place, and that new place doesn't allow dogs. Um, I strongly feel that if you're going to get a dog, that you, you are getting a, a lifetime buddy. The dog's lifetime, obviously, but still. Um, so when you move, first of all, did you not think that you were going to move? And second of all, did you really not? were you really not able to find a place that doesn't allow dogs. I mean, a lot of places do allow them. So it's just something that it always bumps me out because now the dog isn't a cute little puppy anymore. Now it's an adult dog, so it's going to be harder to adopt out. It is going to probably have some separation and trust issues that the new pet parent is going to have to be very patient and thinking of. So, you know, I, I really hope that when you think to, about getting a pet that the cute factor is, is not one of the reasons why you want to do it. Um, because any animal, especially when they're babies, is going to look cute. And then when they become an adult, they're going to have a unique set of needs and personality traits. And I feel it's important that you should be willing to um, accept those challenges and responsibilities. And I, I know some people might be thinking it's like, dude is going on and on about how it's a life. It's like, you know, I have a mouse problem at home. You know, I set up traps. Um, you would be surprised, you know, um, if you, that, you know, like, if, if, even if it's an animal that you would naturally consider a pest or icky and creepy crawly, once you've had to take it in and, uh, care for it, uh, the, that same animal that you might have been setting up traps for, um, you know, it's the same species, and yet this one, uh, you gave a name, you saw it roll around on the wheel and on the ball. You might be genuinely shocked just how upset uh, you can get um, when they finally pass on you. Um, it, it changes you a lot when you care for something uh, like that. For instance, I was never a snake guy. Uh, I didn't have any real huge fear of them, but I was all set on ever owning one. And then I came into a situation where um, uh, there was a uh, six-foot red-tailed boa that hadn't eaten in a year. And so I took him to the vet. The vet gave him about a 50-50 sh uh, chance. Um, I had to uh, do these injections on the side. And at first, the thing was so lethargic that it didn't even mind getting a needle jabbed into its side. And, um, you know, it took, it took a while to nurse this thing back to health. And I remember one time uh, the ceramic heater on the tank broke. And I felt so bad because I knew all the pet stores were closed. And I wasn't going to be able to get a new one until the next day. I didn't have a backup because a ceramic heater is supposed to last forever. I don't know how this one busted on me. But so I take the snake out of the uh, habitat. And uh, I set it, set it on my lap while I'm watching uh, TV. And it tries to get, you know, in between the cushions a couple of times, but finally it's like, all right, well, his body heat's nice, so I'm just going to settle up on him. So um, somebody else uh, gets home, uh, comes in through the door, goes, hey, ah! And I go, what? Oh, yeah. Somehow I managed to forget while I was watching TV that I have a six-foot snake sitting in my lap. So at that point I realized, holy crap, I guess I'm a snake guy now. Um... And it's something that, even a year before that, I never would have assumed would be the case. Um, yeah, so, so some of this stuff can uh, surprise you. Like, 
don't immediately write off an animal because you, again, think it's, you know, either icky or, you know, especially in the case of snakes, like, you know, that it's slimy to feel or, or anything like that. It's not, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, animals that you might think that you'd prefer. So, uh, for instance, uh, you think that you would prefer, you know, say, a frog over a tarantula. Well, I can almost guarantee you that most of the tarantulas are going to be a million times nicer than half the frogs that we sell. Most of the frogs are a look, don't touch kind of a pet. Um, quite a few in the reptile section, I'd argue even a few in the um, small animal section would be more of a look, don't touch kind of a pet. Um, at least in my experience, when it comes to hamsters, it seems like the smaller and cuter that they get, the more of a Napoleon complex they have. And, um, you know, I think the smallest, cutest ones that you can do are a robo hamster. And I've had them actively seek out my fingers to bite when I'm just putting their food in the dish, you know. And I'm a giant compared to you. Like, how, how dare you? You know, that's a lot of nerve. But, um, yeah, like I said, if uh, you do a lot of research, you might be surprised to find that the right companion animal for you is one that you know would have never even considered. You know, you go in uh, looking for a uh, hamster and you, and you walk away with a parakeet. Or you come in looking for a guinea pig and, you know, you walk away with a leopard gecko. I'm just throwing out examples here. Um, most of those four are probably going to be my first four videos because those are some of the more common animals. Um, but, yeah. Um, aquatics, especially. Uh, I... Some stores will recommend uh, setting up the um, tank about two days before you get any fish. I would go to argue even upwards of two weeks because you can uh, put in a pinch of fish food and actually start a nitrogen cycle going so that when you uh, put the fish in, basically when you get a fish, it's there's such a thing called new tank syndrome. It's uh, the nitrogen cycle. They, you know, uh, and again, I'll get into it more with the uh, fish video, but you know, um, you can't put all the fish in immediately at once, uh, especially depending on the size of the tank. You usually want to just start out with uh, one or two starter fish, wait a whole two-week cycle for the ammonia and nitrate levels to balance out before you get any more. Again, if you do just a little bit of research or if you watch my aquatics video, I can get more into that. Um, but yeah, so initial purchase is going to be a bit much uh, more than you might expect, but also over the course of the life of the... Um, pet. I mean, if they get sick, you know, are you just going to let it die and get another one? I mean, you know, ideally, if you're getting something like this and you're going to fall in love with it, you're going to be responsible for it and you're going to take it to a vet and an unexpected vet visit, even if it's just a little hamster with wet tail, is going to be a lot more than you thought and it's going to be always a, probably the worst time of your life. So honestly, having another life in the house, you really want to have some disposable income for something like this. And a lot of people don't consider how much even just a fish can cost. I mean, you know, the rise in the electric bill, you know, um, doing weekly water changes, monitoring how much you're feeding because overfeeding is one of the biggest killers, I think, of fish besides, once they get past the uh, new tank syndrome, uh, the nitrogen cycle and stuff, uh, that's usually the second best, uh, biggest killer. Um, also, um, most of the fish that you can find in any uh, pet stores are tropical. So they absolutely 100% need a heater. And you definitely want to get a decent one that... Um, I unfortunately lost a tank of guppies because I bought an appropriate sized heater. And I didn't realize that the thermostat inside the heater broke. So it wouldn't shut off once it reached the required temperature. It just kept on getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And one went belly up and I didn't know why. I scooped it out with a net. And then uh, the next two went belly up. And so I was dipping my hand in with a test strip to see if it was something in the water quality. And that's when I realized that it was halfway to uh, coffee temperature. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess my heater broke. So um, th there's even, you know, somebody that's had an aquarium for a long time, you know, that was something that never occurred to me that, oh, yeah, if the thermostat breaks, then, you know, you basically cook the fish. So uh, definitely, you know, when you do your research, you know, if you can, talk to people that have had pets for quite a number of years. Uh, forums are a really big one because a lot of times there'll be uh, a really odd question that doesn't come up too often that uh, you, that somebody else had happened to them so they can get some insight. And um, it's funny because it sounds like I'm trying to talk you out of getting a pet. I'm not. I actually want you to be as informed and... Um, 
and you know almost nervous you know about about what you're about to you know uh, embark on because i think the pets are great i think that they uh can be so good for us um like i said for a companion you know they i think statistically they add like what five to ten years to your life if you're a pet parent as opposed to not because they just help with uh you know so much uh stress and uh especially in the case of like say a dog you know that that dog is going to make you take it outside for uh you know a few walks a day that's something that you probably wouldn't have done on your own um well some people some people are you know better at exercise than others but um for instance when i was furloughed that was the uh, most exercise i got for for a bit there at my lowest was uh even if i was feeling sorry for myself the dog was still um i'm gonna start chewing up the carpet unless you uh take me out for our, our daily so you know i am grateful that i had her but like i said i even when uh, i was furloughed for two months i made sure to take time to put her in her kennel um to to leave the house for uh for periods of time uh, we were kind of on a lockdown so i didn't really actually go anywhere i just kind of drove around but um i made sure that she didn't think that oh now our new life is that you know daddy and mommy are home 24 7. um and uh yeah when it comes to any kind of uh responsibility like that uh if you're the parent getting it for the kid again really really think about um what it's going to mean i i don't think that having uh the kid clean the room for a month is a great way to do uh you know to prove that they can be responsible for something um for example uh you know because room cleaning has nothing to do with taking care of a life so you know that's a completely different animal and i'm going to tease you a bit but it, it, it almost just more seems like a con to get you to not have to clean the room um i mean if you want to do something for the kid you know for responsibility you know i remember back in school um you know they'd either have like five pound bags of flour or an egg or even an animatronic baby that you know the students would have to carry around uh, in order to kind of understand the responsibility of uh being a parent i'd recommend something along those lines even more than uh than um you know having the room clean you know maybe a uh you know practice you know uh you know cage cleaning water changing you know depending on the type of animal you're looking to get um but yeah it's it's usually a lot more complicated than you initially would think on the uh, surface and you know if this hasn't scared you away then uh hopefully you are watching this in the future where i already have a specific video to what you are planning on getting so you know if you're going to want to get a hamster then i recommend clicking on my hamster video next uh if you want to know a little bit about me i'll uh, be doing weekly uh podcasts to just kind of catch up or if you're just here for the content then you can just go straight to the content i won't have my feelings hurt but uh if you do decide after all this to still get an animal then Welcome to the pet parent family. I hope that you find a uh, a good fit and that you make a good forever home for your new companion and addition to the family. Bye. And I missed the click button. I swear, every single video, I, I try and make it a nice ending and then I miss the click button. And I'm not going to edit it out. Nope.